morning. I'm Wanda Laughlin. I'm a senior ag assistant too at the University of Florida North Florida Research and Education Center, Swanee Valley. And we're gonna we're inside one of our teaching greenhouses today, and we're gonna talk about cucumber production. This is called a mini cucumber. It's this variety in particular is called Menar. It's an industry standard. And this is a very thin-skinned cucumber. They call it a snack type cucumber that you don't have to peel them, and they're also seedless. This is called a Dutch bucket system. These are Beto buckets. Um, and this bucket, it's a hard-sided bucket. It holds approximately three gallons or about 10 liters. Um, and this, this particular container has a reservoir bottom on it. So as we feed, we put an emitter into the top of this bucket. And so as it fertigates through, it holds about an inch and a half to two inches of solution in the bottom of this bucket. And that is a reservoir, it's a, it's a safety for the plant. If something happens and uh, the power goes down or I miss an irrigation cycle in between, the plant has that extra reservoir of water or nutrient in the bottom of the bucket to, to help it. Um, so it's got an overflow inside this bucket. So as this, this is called an elbow, and as that solution gets above that reservoir bottom, the rest of it flows out. And in our particular case, we have an in-ground drainage system built into this greenhouse. So that enables us to catch the nutrient that leaches out the bottom and we can contain that and we can use it in another area or we can dispose of it properly so it's not flowing into our groundwater. The media that we're using in, inside this greenhouse, all of our crops are being grown in 100% perlite. Perlite is a volcanic ore. It's a rock that is superheated and as it pops, it develops air pockets that help um, with our aeration inside of our crop. It doesn't provide any nutritional value to the crop at all. It just is a support and anchor for the root system of the plant. So it's a sterile medium. Um, it's very lightweight. You need to wet it because it's very, it, it has a lot of dust to it that you can inhale or get in your eyes. So you really want to be careful with it. But it has a it allows you to be able to manage the irrigation and the nutrient of the crop so when we get started this crop is already pretty advanced so um, just to walk you through how we started so we start off with our empty dutch bucket with just our perlite in it and our perlite is wet so it's got some moisture in it so i'll take a young transplant and you can see that each one of these dutch buckets has two plants so each plant is going to have its own emitter okay so that's how they irrigate. They get all the water through the spaghetti tubing. This is what is considered micro irrigation. And they're essentially roughly 12 inches apart, which is a standard spacing for greenhouse cucumbers. So I've got one in each corner of the pot. And initially the, the plants just grow on their own. And then I add these strings, our vining strings to the plant and as you can see these are pretty mature cucumbers they've already reached the top of our trellis um, in our umbrella method that we're using to train these guys and as these cucumbers grow they grow up this vine twine that's what this is called and every so often every few feet on this particular crop we put a vine clip and we wind these cucumbers clockwise around the clip, around the string, until they get to the top of the trellis. Once they get to the top of the trellis, we gently um, train them over without kinking that stem. And then from, from the trellis to back to the floor, they just pretty much free fall. So they grow very quickly. So every few days, expect a couple of inches of growth on these plants. And we try to keep them separated from each other because they have these nice tendrils that like to grab each other. So, and they'll grab a hold of the fruit and they'll actually girdle the fruit. So you have to make sure that your tendrils aren't causing any damage. I tend to take them off as the plant is coming down. On the way up, they could actually help you by adhering the plant to the string, but on the way down, they just, they just cause trouble. So they're not necessary for the plant. They're just um, part of the plant's natural tendency to be able to climb. So we use vine clips. These are small vine clips and they will grab a hold of the string. They have small teeth on the inside. And when we close, we put the string right in the middle of those teeth. And when we close the clip, it grabs hold and does not allow that clip to move or allow the vine to move. We always wanna make sure that we put a clip underneath a 
strong lateral leaf. We don't want it to set directly under the fruit because we don't want, if this vine settles for some reason, we don't want the clip to damage the stem of the fruit, but we want it to be underneath one of these lateral leaves so it supports the plant. As we move along through the crop, these crops naturally set suckers and that is extra growth that comes out of the leaf nodes. And in this case, here's a sucker. So as we come through, see this long, this is extra ma plant material that we don't need. We train these plants to just the main leader, which is here's our main leader down here. And we protect this growing tip. So this extra sucker that is growing out, we're just gonna pinch that off, break it off very gently and see if we've got the next plant. And then any of this small fruit that develops secondary to the big fruit, we want to pull those off too because this is a multi-fruiting variety and it puts too much of a fruit load on this plant and if the plant can't support that extra fruit, it will start aborting the younger fruit on the new growth of the plant. So we don't want that to happen because that's our, our next couple of weeks of harvest. So we want to make sure that we leave enough fruit for our market but not too many fruit that it actually takes away from the, our production. And then when we harvest these fruit, this is a nice mature fruit. It could probably go to the end of the day, but this is a daily harvest crop for this particular variety. These small mini cucumbers, they really develop very quickly. And if I don't harvest this fruit today, it will be too big for the market tomorrow. So we really, we want to get these off of here. So what would I would do, I would hold the vine and twist the fruit and gently pop this fruit off. What I want is to leave a slight bit of that stem attached to the fruit because it keeps that end from drying off too quickly um, and it will lead to a longer shelf life. So if you can get good at it, you can do a half spin and just pop the fruit off and you get the same effect. But if So we are doing this trial in a um, high tunnel house here in Hastings, Florida. This variety of cucumber we're doing for the trial is the Manara cucumber. We're using um, three gallon nursery pots for this particular trial. And the media, of course, is the combination of cocoa, fiber, perlite, and peat moss. And we seeded the cucumbers in Mar on March 5th. We transplanted on March 22nd. Here we are, the mid mid April, exactly a month later, and I'm doing my first harvest today. Um, eventually, the cucumbers over time will string to the top of the greenhouse, and, and we'll let them grow back down, probably through mid June, end of June, um, as production keeps up. <laughs> 